Oi, pessoas, tudo bem com você? Bem-vindos de novo ao vídeo. Hoje eu vou falar sobre o verbo ficar. Porque é muito, muito, muito difícil para mim. I will check that light situation in a second. I'll be back. So I've been doing a little bit of studying and in recent weeks I've been wanting to learn about the verb fika. It's quite frustrating because it has so many different uses in Portuguese. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about my introduction to the word fika. Well, it all started with a song from Brazil's favorite Anita. I know, I know everyone doesn't like Anita, I'm only joking people. Um, but yeah, she, she, I heard this song when I was in Brazil. This is when I thought I'd mastered the word fika. I was like, yes, because I understood, right? I understood. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the first time I heard the word fika and uh, how I learned what it meant. Um, basically, a song from Silva and Anita. I heard it while I was watching a film in Brazil and um, I understood fika to the bane. Fica tudo bem. Fica, fica, fica tudo bem. When I heard that sentence, I knew what tudo bem mean. Like it was one of the first things I learned in Portuguese, and I realized that fica uh, meant stay. So I understood fica tudo bem, stay, everything's gonna be okay. So now I thought that's it. I've learned a new word, fica. So that's great. Like I understand fica means stay. Through time and learning Portuguese, I kept seeing this word fica turn up. Little did I know, there are many, 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 muito, 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 different meanings for the word fica, for the verb fica. And yeah, so some examples I have found, fica bem, fica em casa, fica com vontade, fica com um livro, fica com um amigo, fica sem dinheiro, fica doente. Fica com uma pessoa. Fica coto, fica grande. Fica bem em você. Fica feliz por algum. There's a lot of meanings for fica. So originally, like these were the first sentences that I learned when I started learning Portuguese. Onde você vai fica no Rio? Where will you stay in Rio? So again, using fica as stay. Fica no Copacabana Palace. I will stay in the Copacabana Palace. Again, stay. Uh, this is where it got confusing for me. Onde fica a farmacia mais próxima? Where is the nearest? Pharmacy. Now for me, like when I first started learning Portuguese and even now, I would just say Onde é farmacia mais próxima? So where is the nearest pharmacy? Using the verb ser. So seeing fica in that sentence for the first time, it confused me. It's, for me it's like where can I get? Where stays the pharmacy? Uh, and then we have other sentences Onde é o banheiro? Which can be replaced with Onde fica o banheiro? It's the same thing, it's like using fica as ser. Example number three. Fika used to express a change of state, emotional change of state, to get, to become, to turn. So it's like when you become happy or when you turn happy. Il fique... What does that say? I wrote down an example and I'm struggling to read it. Il fique furioso, furioso, furioso con mio chef. Il fique furioso con mio chef. Uh, I became furious with my boss. So it's like an emotion, it's furious. He became furious. Um, okay, so fica is now, it's a way of prepositioning a feeling. Il fique feliz, I became happy. Fica feliz, that's another thing because is there another way to use fica to express a feeling of happiness? Like example, um, I'm just confused. So another example is Você fica lindo como este vestido. You look beautiful with this dress. So it's like a, it's a way to say you look beautiful. Like you change into a dress and now you look beautiful. Basically, all in all, I'm very confused about this word. Number one, to use it, fica as to stay. Just like Anita said. Fica tudo bem. If only it was that simple, right? Number two, substitute for the verb ser. So we can use it as a substitute for the verb ser. How else can I use that as an example? Can I say, I can't, I can't think of an example, but like on the or bank, like where is, where is the banier or where is the toilet? So number three, to change 
of state of emotional so become happy become furious become annoyed become upset uh fiquei triste quando saí do brasil i became sad when i left brazil i think that's an example and i think it works let me know in the comments if it doesn't work it can be also used to describe food apparently so here's an another another example i found essa pizza ficou muito boa it means uh this pizza was very good like for me look this pizza is very good uh, but it's confusing because it's like fico is past tense so it's like for me it's like you said oh this this pizza was very good that means like once you finish the pizza but here it's used as you are like it's used in a present tense this pizza is very good if you're at a restaurant and you're eating the pizza you can say essa pizza fico muito boa but can you see why i'm confused because fico is past tense so it's like this pizza was very good but i guess because i'm trying to translate it into english and i'm just trying to understand this purely in portuguese so let's try and focus on that and then when using the fi the word the verb ficar for the verb stay it can also be used in the sense of having or keeping Pode ficar com o troco. You can keep the, the the change if you go to a shop you pay something and they give you change they give you money back you can say ah oh, no Pode ficar com o troco like you can stay with the change, right? And then fika can be described as a situation when two people are dating but not committed. For example, eu fiquei com uma menina ontem à noite. That's another example, like when you are in a non-committed relationship with another person. Not a relationship, but I don't know. You maybe you spent the night with someone else last night and you use eu fiquei com uma menina ontem à noite. So that's like another one. That's the fifth way to use the verb fika. So to conclude, this is currently one of the most confusing verbs for me. The thing is for me, like when I receive comments and messages from my Instagram, where everything I write is in Portuguese, I obviously receive messages in Portuguese and comments. If I don't understand them, I translate them. Most of the time I can like decipher most of the sentence. Um, but fika for me, whenever I seen this word come in a sentence, I was so confused, so confused. Because for example, if, if they said like, it's a pizza, muito boa. I would be like, the pizza, the pizza's good, but the, the word fico would completely confuse me. And then I would have to translate the sentence because I didn't understand how fico worked in that sentence. Okay, um, so all in all, the word fica is very confusing. And it's something that I'm struggling with in Portuguese. Um, one of these words that like, it, it appears everywhere. It appears in so many different cases, so many different sentences. Um, and yeah, I'm really struggling to, uh, to get a hold of that. And that's my, that is like a, what well, my current situation, my current struggle with Portuguese. On another note, so this year I started Duolingo, um, and I just wanted to quickly go through a little email that I received from them this year. And it's a summary, um, of my time on Duolingo. And obviously I committed my Duolingo learning to Brazilian Portuguese. Let's have a look how much time I spent on Duolingo. Look at all you've accomplished, it says. So my Duolingo stats for 2020, learning Brazilian Portuguese. 2020, year in review. You made Duolingo proud, thank you very much. Uh, you made your days count with Portuguese lessons. Here. Yeah. It's the most eighth most popular language on Duolingo. I spent 2,278 minutes. That is a total of 37 hours. Apparently, I studied 3,642 words. Interesting. 144 minutes was the longest duration. March the 22nd, I spent 144 minutes uninterrupted on Duolingo. Jesus, what was I doing that day? It feels like that was like just when we went into lockdown. Um, progress through experience points, 7,962 experience points. I deserve better in 2021, apparently. Um, so yeah, uh, that's interesting. I ranked top 3% of learners. Like, that's quite pretty good, no? That's not bad. Anyway, yeah, Duolingo was good for me. If you don't, if you haven't tried Duolingo already, I recommend it. It's very good for learning, learning different words, um, words that are kind of um, the ones that you wouldn't typically learn in lessons. Uh, so let me know what you think about how difficult the verb fika is if you think it's normal for me to be having these problems put down in the comments if you want to try and explain the verb fika 
um, I may have enlightened you to the struggles I have with the verb fika. Um, I understand that it's similar to the word get, the verb get in English, and um, as much as I would love to be able to explain that to you in detail, I probably couldn't, to be honest. <laughs> it's, it's, like I said, I always said I'm not an English teacher. Um, but however, I am actually looking into studying to teach a bit more English, um, something I would like to do in the future. So it's something that I'm going to try and spend a bit of time studying is to get a certificate for teaching basic English. At least then I'll be able to understand languages a bit more better. Um, so that's something for the future. Until then guys, thank you for watching the video. See you guys in the next video. Comment below what you think about the verb fika. Don't forget to subscribe and give me a thumbs up. See you later. Ati mais. Ati logo. Ciao.